There are going to be a lot of people listening to this tape, tuned it out too quick. They turned it off. They should have stayed. Something prophesied many, many years ago, aimed at this very generation and this time. Through the prophet Isaiah said, a time is coming. God said, I'm going to turn everything upside down. And the scripture makes it very clear. It says, behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down. There's a sudden judgment coming to this world and it's at the door. And I want you to hear what the prophet Isaiah is saying. It's not my message. Now, if you're tied to this world, if you're in love with the things of this world and you are not walking with the Lord, you will not want to hear this and you may want to just cast it aside and say, well, I'll endure this message. And even if you are a born again Christian, if you love the Lord and you're close to him, if you didn't believe that this is the pure word of God, there may be a tendency not to take it serious. But this is the word of God. It is not man's prophecy. There are a lot of prophecies going forth in the world and, and they are, uh, I don't know whether you would call them scripturally based or not, but this is scripture. This is the living word of God. And if you believe this is the pure word of God, then you have to open your heart to what the prophet Isaiah has to say this morning. In one hour, the world is going to change, the scripture says. In fact, when you get to Revelation 8th chapter, John warned in one day, death and mourning, yea, in one hour, an utter burning and judgment will come. That's the 18th chapter of Revelation. And it confirms that this is going to happen. Jesus said it's going to be when all men cry peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes. A sudden, unexpected destruction comes from the hand of the Lord. Isaiah warns that there, he mentions a city. In fact, a number of prophets do, but most uh, eminent Bible scholars, and I've checked through my library, and they believe, as I do, that this prophecy that we're hearing this morning from Isaiah is directed to this generation in one day, in one hour. And he says at that time, there, there was going to be a great burning. Now, secular prophets and those in homeland security, whether it's in the United States or England or Germany, all over the world now, they, they are saying that, that there is going to come a nuclear accident or a nuclear holocaust coming to a city. They often name New York City. The scripture says, if, when you go through Isaiah, the 24th chapter, it, it says that the gates are going to be dissolved. The gates are going to be uh, devastated. That means the exits and entrances. We don't know where it is. The city is named and a burning and a fire is mentioned here. I've been prophesying for a number of years that uh, of something I saw when I was on the street in, in, <clears throat> on uh, Broadway and 42nd Street. And it's come back to me many, many times of a thousand bur fires burning in this particular city we, in which we live. But you see, I don't know where it is. He doesn't name the city, but he does say that there, there, there is going to be a sudden destruction that's going to change everything. The world is going to change in one hour. The church is going to change in one hour. And we as individuals are going to change in one hour. Now, this message is not to frighten. Because if, if you're confident that you're saved and under the blood of Christ, and redeemed, you know that anything like this happens, it's instant glory. We pass from life into death. And like the Apostle Paul said, we should be of this mindset, that we thank God for this world, we thank God for our life, but our preference is to go and be with Christ. That should be the desire in your heart. The scripture said the fear of death is a dominion, it's a terror. And Paul said, you've lived all your life that way. But he said, God says he doesn't want you to live that way. He wants to deliver us from the fear of death. And if we lose the fear of death through trusting in Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, we will not fear no matter what happens, what the newscast is, what anybody says, or a message such as this. You, you will only be moved to awaken to what the, the Lord says to do. A sudden cataclysmic event is going to strike and the Bible Isaiah says the lofty this is 
26 verse 5, the lofty, meaning the proud city, will be laid low even to the ground. And because you say, well, why warn? What's the purpose of that? Why don't you just wait till it happens? Why live on any kind of anxiety? Why put this burden upon us? But remember what Jesus said when he first saw the destruction of Jerusalem. He said, there's going to be a, this city is going to burn to the ground. And he said, I'm telling you now so that when it happens, you'll believe. You'll believe that there is a God who so loved you, he warns you. This city is going to the ground and there won't be one stone left upon another in the temple. And Jesus warned. He said, now, I'm warning you for a reason. So that when it happens, when you see these things come up, you'll understand that you were loved. And, and Paul the Apostle, when he's talking about the sudden destruction, he called that information light. He said, you're members of a body walking in light. You're getting Holy Ghost insight. He said, you're not in the darkness. You won't walk in darkness. So that when these sudden things come, and, and there's panic all around you. There's going to be something happen to you by the Holy Spirit. There's going to be something that quickens you and say, Well, my God warned me. There were true, true words that came forth from the pulpit. And we were, we were warned. Even though in this day of prosperity, nobody wants to hear it. I don't want to hear it. But folks, it is here. And I'll tell you why this message is being brought forth this morning before I close. He said, the dreams are going to fade. He, he goes on to say that the music is going to fade, of, of the zithers or the guitars, and, and the, the, uh, there's, there's going to be such a change. Everything is going to change in this world in one hour. I believe that the, the, that the prophet Isaiah is talking about our day. First of all, by... The growing number of prophets warning of an apocalyptic moment coming. Now, when I talk about prophets, I'm not talking about just church prophets. I'm talking about secular prophets. Because God uses secular prophets. These are experts. These are scientists. And remember in the scripture, God said of, of Assyria, Assyria is my rod against Israel to correct them. In other words, Assyria is doing my will. I am speaking through Assyria to my people. And remember also about Cyrus. The scripture said of Cyrus, he's a heathen king. And when you get to Amos, Amos the prophet said, Cyrus is, God speaking through him said, Cyrus is my shepherd and he's doing my bidding. So when, when you hear all of these secular uh scientists and all of these these are not church people these are not religious people they they are saying it's at the door uh, what about the sensuality what about all of this nonchalance what about this racing for money and gold and greed wall street has become the greediest source of 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 vile corruption in man's history they have taken this nation into such risk and such depth there, debt there is no way out of it and we live right at the foot of we, it, it's right at the <clears throat> just blocks away from where I'm preaching this morning and the second reason you, you see what I'm preaching this morning is mild compared to what I hear now is that right or wrong what you hear in the news and what you hear constantly fed so that we just want to turn it off. But you see, God moves. God moves in. <clears throat> these, these are the warning times when prophets are speaking because the scripture says the Lord's <clears throat> will do nothing until he speaks through his prophets, through Amos. God said, I don't do anything until I warn through my prophets. And the second reason why... I believe we can assume that what Isaiah is warning speaks to our generation. God always moves in judgment. He always acts when the cup of violence overflows. Violence. Now, folks, let me speak plainly to you from the depths of my soul. I'm not a prophet. I've never claimed to be a prophet. I'm a watchman just one of many 
But listen to me now. There is no greater violence in the sight of God than the violence of pedophiles. Those who are raping children. Those who are stealing children right off the streets and taking them to, to the Far East and putting them in brothels in India and all the, the Far East. And, and here in the United States, an entire church denomination paying hundreds of millions of dollars to settle lawsuits because their little children were sodomized. When you think of the thousands and thousands of babies aborted in the United States and around the world, and that blood cries from the ground. And the Bible says God destroyed Noah's age because the earth was filled with violence. And God said, I can't handle it anymore. I can't take it. I will not take it. And he was patient for 120 years of strong, faithful preaching, a prophetic word. And then God saw, and folks, I believe now, think of the, the murdering in our schools, the terrorizing of our children. What are we doing? Getting hardened to the news? D does it not move us anymore? I can tell you it moves the heart of God. And I believe that blood cries from the ground. How long do you think God will endure? How long do you think God will put up with this, even here now on the internet? A pedophile is taking pictures and, and telling pedophiles where to go to find the children where it's easiest to pick up a child and he's allowed to do it and had, can't be stopped folks that's all going to change this is all going to change in one hour when it comes is going to change the church in one hour the church is going to change it's going to change dead churches it's going to change live churches the prophet pictures a great shaking as though God took an olive tree that had already been harvested and he begins to shake it. In other words, there, there's been a harvest, but there's still, God said, I'm going to shake everything that can be shaken. I'm, I'm going to turn everything upside down, according to the prophet. At this time of shaking, though, something is going to happen that's so incredible. Now remember, this is a time of, of cataclysmic devastation. This is a time that's so incredibly dark. This is a time of fire. And in the middle of that, what about God's people? What's happening in the church? The apostasy is going to change overnight. Everything that we see that is wrong in the church of Jesus Christ is going to change. But in the house of God, there's going to be a revival. See, this is not, I didn't get along with God and pray and say, God, talk to me. Put in my head what's going to happen. I have people all over the world, wherever I travel, say, Brother Dave, you speak of prophetic. What's, what's next? What's coming? I said, I don't know. I don't know. I'll go to my Bible. If God speaks it through his word, then I believe it and then I'll preach it. So I see this and it makes me shout. I know what's coming and you know what's coming. But folks think God's interest is in his church. In the church of Jesus Christ, his overcoming church. And the Bible said in the middle of this, there's going to be a song rise up. From the islands of the sea, from the uttermost parts of the world, there's going to be a song rise up in the middle of all of this. Look at it, verse 14. Then shall they lift up, first, verse 13, when thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, there's going to be a great shaking. What's happening during the shaking? Verse 13, verse 14. Then they, in other words, they shall lift up their voice, they shall sing, for the majesty of the Lord, they shall cry aloud from the sea. Wherefore, glorify you the Lord in the fires. Did you hear it? There should be an amen coming from the glory of your soul. Because in the middle of the fire, God's going to have a people who are not in panic. God is going to have a people that are going to praise the majesty of Almighty God. He said, in the fires you will sing. There's a song coming to the church of Jesus Christ. Folks, we're not going down. We're going up. We are going up. There shall be a song in the midst of the fire. <clears throat> Verse 16. For the, from the uttermost part of the earth have we heard what? Not weeping. Not groaning. Not murmuring. Not complaining. Not agonizing. That you hear a song coming from China, and then you hear it from India, 
You hear coming out of the tribes of Africa, out of Dafur, out of every nation. It's coming from every island of the sea. It's coming from the United States and Canada, South America, the whole world, for the uttermost part of the world. I hear a song, the prophet said. I hear a, I hear people who are facing calamity. I hear people that are seemingly have no hope. And there's a song. Millions and millions of people around the world singing the song when this hour comes it's coming in the darkest time of all I, I, I believe that our young people are going into colleges and their faith is being robbed that ungodly atheistic teachers and professors have our young people as prisoners for three, four, five, and six years and they keep bombarding them till there's no faith they, they leave believing there is no God like in Sweden, 80% of the people now say that the population that there's no God, don't believe in God. 20% believe in God. And many, many students. And folks, I believe that's going to change because in one hour, when everybody is waking and when the world is shaking and trembling, those professors are going to be looking for somebody to give them a word. Prosperity preachers are going to get their Bibles out looking for something to say to the people saying, what's happened? Why didn't you warn us? But I believe that in that time, everything in college is going to change. Oh, yes. All the survivors. You see, this is not, I'm not talking about the end of the world. There's still ahead. There's, the, 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 things are going to change in one hour, but there's still... We're talking about in the future beyond that the Antichrist and but you see the Antichrist can't come to power until there's chaos It has to come out of chaos Hitler came out of chaos The Antichrist is going to come out of a chaotic world where he there there is something of wisdom There's something given to him a demonic power that brings people some kind of hope I'm talking about the secular world But folks, this is all about to change and the Bible says we as individuals are going to change. In one hour, we're going to have our focus in life changed. Our entire focus. We will no longer be obsessing about our own problems and adversities. We won't be, we won't be focused on me. We won't be focused on our problems. As serious as they are and, and as challenging as they may be, God, it's very clear. This will not be our focus that's all going to be changed everything that was once dear to us is is no longer going to have value it's it, other than those things that are of the spirit and of love and of christ things that we held dear are are going to be held and, and absolutely are going to vanish all the idols are going to be crushed to stone is what the bible says here's the promise from the book of isaiah 27 chapter he said, in that day, all the idols will be trampled to dust. And the last thing the world's going to be talking about is sports. I have nothing in sports. I like sports. I'm a football fan. But, you know, the Bible says it's going to be good. They're not going to be any more $250 million settlement for these people in a starving world. He said, it's all going to change. It goes even deeper than that. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with his mistress, or the buyer and the seller, as with the lender and the buyer. Everything will be brought to the same level, whether it's presidents, world leaders, those in poverty, all going to face the same struggles, the same conditions. <clears throat> Nothing will, there'll be no respect of persons. Are you ready for some comfort? <laughs> I said, are you ready for some comfort? Folks, I don't like to preach like this. For the last six weeks, I've preached nothing but grace. I risk people getting mad. Every time I've had to preach much like this, people leave. But one day I stand before God. And he said, if you see these things coming and you don't warn, the blood's on your hand. And I read that and tremble. There should be no one that comes to Times Square Church surprised. Paul said, he has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we wake or sleep, we, we will live together with him. He said, comfort yourself. He, he's talking about sudden destruction. He's talking about time that we're going to be with the Lord. And he said, I want you to comfort one another. Comfort one another. And he said, whether we live or die. And folks, that's where we have to come to right now. 
you, you watch the news in the next 30 days, and especially the next two weeks. Listen to, to what's happening to the economy. Listen and just remember God speaking, not to make you afraid, but to prepare your heart. He said, you're to put on the breastplate of faith. This is Paul the Apostle said, in these times, when we live under the threat of a sudden destruction or the knowledge of a sudden destruction coming on the earth, when, when, when this has been told to us and when we see it and we hear it, he, he said, you're not to tremble, you're not to sorrow as the world sorrows. He said, no. He said, you go about comforting one another and speak to one another, saying, live or die, we're the Lord's. Now, it comes down to this, going to your friends, going to the body of Christ, went after them and shake hands and look right in the eye and say, live or die, we're the Lord's. That's what Paul said. You're going to encourage one another and say, we live or die, we will go and live with Christ. We are headed for eternal life in Christ. Folks. I'm asking God, and I, I more and more, you say, well, you can come to that because you're old man now. But you see, I'm coming to a place now where I'm not going to live in fear. I don't live in fear. I want to be here in the United States. I want to be here in New York City if anything happens to this city. I want to be here in the middle of it. And I don't want the fear of death to have dominion over me. And you can't have freedom. You can't have freedom until you comfort yourself with the Word of God, saying, whatever happens, if it happens tomorrow, bless God, I'm going to be shouting on the streets of glory with all the saints of God. I'm going to pass from death into life. This We're not to live in fear. We're not to live in bondage. You say, well, Brother Dave, you already put us in fear, and now you're trying to get us out of it. No, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. I... I, my message today is that there's a song coming out of this. And if you leave this building, if you leave this building discouraged, if you walk out of here and say that's nothing but gloom and doom, yes it is on a human level. But on a spiritual level, it's life eternal. It's life. And I just have a secret thought in my heart. It's probably just David Wilkerson's thoughts. But I have a feeling, just as before 9-11, the Holy Spirit moved in this church and other congregations and warned us there were moments of silence. Sometime 15 minutes we sat in this church just before the blast. And God was speaking to us not to be afraid. And I, it's going to be different this time. I believe that if something is going to happen in this city or wherever it happens, the saints of God are going to be quickened by the Holy Spirit and there are going to be some singing and shouting and praising of God to encourage the body to strengthen their spirit. Now get up on your feet. I bind the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. He's not given us the spirit of fear, but love and power and a sound mind. You young people that are in the choir, the young people that are listening to me right now, there is a future. There, the whole world thinks there's no future. Folks, this is just the beginning of our future. This is just the beginning of our future. There are going to be a lot of people listening to this tape, tuned it out too quick. They turned it off. They should have stayed. Folks, I walk these streets and I sing. I sing in spite of, of, of crises. I sing in spite of all those things. There's something God puts in the heart. You've got to get your song now. That'll be too late. Get it now. Get a hold of your song. There's a song in the night, but there's a song in the fire. Some of you are in a fire. The Bible says, build up your faith. The Apostle Paul said, put on the breastplate of hope, uh, uh, of faith and love and hope. Oh, praise God for the hope that is in our hearts. You need a touch, an absolute touch of God. You need the spirit of fear to be broken in you. So you can walk out of this building. Maybe that fear is because you're not walking with Christ as you did or should. Maybe you've drifted away. Maybe you walked in here and you've never known what it is to have what people call a new birth. Or you've never surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. This can change you in the next five minutes. There can be a change in your life. 
and the Lord can cleanse you, change your direction, and bring hope and life to your whole body, soul, mind, and spirit. And, and, and we have preached faith so long. We have toyed with faith. We have imagined we have faith. We have talked and preached and, and, and tried to test it and all, but folks, that it, it is time. It is time, and the only reason I can think God would have me do this this morning is that you and I get a hold of some life-changing faith that no matter what happens, somehow God will deliver His people. Folks, we've got to be honest about it. We've got to be honest. I'm not going to play games with the Church of Jesus Christ. You and I have, you and I have to be prepared to die for Jesus if necessary. And we will go through hard times. But if a God can, if a God can keep this world in orbit and there's a whole cosmos moving in their orbits and in their places and can you imagine a God who's named every billions of stars, every multiplied billions of stars, he's named them all. So he sure knows my name. He knows my name and he knows your name. God, help us to believe God and get a song in our trial. Father, in Jesus' name, we fight against doubt and unbelief and this cast down spirit. Lord, help us to face the days ahead with Holy Ghost courage and you are a strong tower, and we can run into you and be safe. We are safe in Christ. Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, give me confidence in the days ahead, and I trust in you. And help me, O oh Lord, to cast my cares upon you. Forgive my sins, Lord. Forgive my unbelief. Come by your Holy Spirit. Lift my spirit, put joy in my heart, and a song in my heart of praise and glory to your holy name. Now let me pray again for the Father, sweep over this congregation in the annex, the overflow rooms, into the balcony, and the choir loft, and the pulpit, and this whole house. Sweep over us with the gentle spirit of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, just breathe upon us now. As we walk out into the sunlight of this day, let us realize, Lord, that this is not the sun that we're looking for. We thank you for it. But, oh, Lord, we, we go into a city where you are the sun. You are the brightness of the day. And, Lord, you will wipe away every tear and you will strengthen us. Lord, we anticipate your coming. We anticipate the soon return of Jesus Christ, our Lord, from glory. Hallelujah. Will you now just thank him for his faithfulness to you? Lord, I thank you.